episode of BJCP Beer Reviews with Leo. Today I'm going to be looking at BJCP Style 3D Czech Dark Lager. This is a relatively harder to find style, but one that has me pretty excited. And for this review, we're going to be looking at Praga Dark Lager by Brewery Samson, or in the original Czech, Prevni Budjovicsky Pivovar. Literally, the first brewery in the Czech city, České Budjovice. This city is worth knowing and probably worth visiting, as it not only hosts Brewery Samson, who were sadly taken over by AB InBev, but also the famous Pivovar Budjovicsky Budvar, of which the widely popular Budweiser beer was originally named for, as it attempted to mimic the style. Now, I should note that uh, the brewery Pivovar Budajovitsky Budvar has stood up against Big Beer and AB InBev and fought to retain the right to use their rightful name across Europe uh, while it's been appropriated here in America uh, and much the rest of the world, to be honest. Um, and, and so when you hear Budweiser, you think, uh, you know what you think, I guess, but... Um, if you do happen to come across a beer that looks kind of funny but says something that looks like Budweiser in Europe, you should definitely give it a try because that is an original Czech beer that's probably uh, hard to come by outside of Europe and definitely worth having a try. Okay, so with that Czech beer history out of the way, uh, let's get into the review. So our one-sentence summary for the style is, and I admit it's a bit vague, but it's a rich, dark, Czech lager with a complex malt character that may include degrees of roast character and usually Satzer type hops. Now, I said that it, it's kind of vague and, and this is because um, the style is actually defined to be highly open to interpretation for the brewer um, and that actually might pose a bit of a challenge in doing this review today in terms of um, measuring its overall impression and seeing how well that this beer uh, ties to that. Okay, so let's try Praga Dark Lager. So I'm gonna pop her open, sorry. And uh, this beer was imported, so you probably have to go to a nicer brewery, or a nicer beer shop in order to get a hold of it. Um, I'm gonna be drinking it out of this, uh, this type of glass. I'm not sure if there's a better one, usually with like lagers and pilsners, you want to have a big, tall, uh, thin glass in order to highlight the clarity, but in a dark beer, I don't think that's as relevant. So I'll pour it out. Okay. Um, yep, so as usual, we're going to start with appearance and work our way through the different style guidelines. So. In terms of appearance, it's um, actually a really beautiful kind of ruby red color. Um, it does have a really nice clarity, even even with its darkness, I can I can see through it uh, clear as day. Um, yeah, I'm a big fan of the color. I'm going to give it a three out of three on appearance. Uh, the head is fading a little bit, I think. From what I know about Czech Pilsners, at least, they tend to have a long uh, standing head, so that's a little disappointing. Uh, it should be persistent. This faded pretty quickly, but it is what it is, so yeah, maybe two out of three on appearance. Okay, Aroma is next, and let's give it a smell. Mmm, that smells nice. Yeah, so... Definitely a malt-driven beer. Um, maybe some fruit character, but again, um, it, it smells like it's a, a fruit character that's coming from the malt rather than maybe like a yeast-derived ester. Um, I'm getting dark fruits, maybe like prunes or um, plums or something like that. Uh, Almost reminiscent of like a big, strong, dark Belgian beer. Um, it smells fantastic. I really want to just jump right into it. Let me see if I can pick out anything else. Um, 
Not an especially high roasty character in the aroma, but that's okay, I think. Um, yeah, aroma, I'm going to give this an 11 out of 12. Okay, mouthfeel is going to be next, so i got to give her a taste. <clears throat> and one more. Okay, so in terms of the mouthfeel, I would say it's um, relatively thin in body, which kind of makes sense, I, I think. Let me double check. Um, I would assume they have to tell you the alcohol. Yeah, 4.5% ABV, so um, it's never going to carry a huge body. That's going to aid in drinkability, though, and... That's always a good thing. Beer, I don't know. I like to drink beer in quantity, <laughs> so I like the lower ABV beers in the, these days. Um, another another thing that, that kind of helps with the drinkability is it's got a pretty decent carbonation. It's not, um, it's not biting, I guess, um, but that sort of cuts in cuts against the alcohol and again with a thin thinner body uh, it just makes it really quite drinkable if anything i would say carbonation might be a little lower than i might might expect or want but excuse me actually checking against the style guidelines i can see that it says moderate to low carbonation is appropriate so um maybe that's a personal critique of the style but uh it's it's on style. So uh, for the mouthfeel, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Okay, the flavor is really where I should need to spend most of my time, as it is 20 out of the 50 points in the style analysis. So, um, yeah, this is a malt-dominated style. Um, I kind of wish that the flavors jumped out at me as something um, more definite. It, it kind of tastes like a bit of a, a blend. Um, yeah, the only thing that, that I'm, like from, from, from a brewer's perspective, I'm getting maybe some some of the darker side of crystal malts but then also a kind of special b type characteristic which um if you don't know that that's kind of where you would get some of those like rum raisin kind of characteristics again that dark stone fruit um flavors um yeah maybe fig plum prune um i, I got a list of malt descriptors up and i'm trying to pick out any that, that jump at me um, I wouldn't say peppery or leathery, um, and what, even though I do say it's a, it's a malty style, it's not on the light malt end where you'd think about, like, German or, or Czech Pilsners, where the malt character is, uh, on that lighter side of, like, cr cracker or biscuit. It's not like that at all. Um maybe some toffee and then in terms of roast character i would say closer to to a toasty character i would say this is relatively low on roast so if you look at this and you're coming in thinking ooh dark red maybe going to be something like a stout or um i don't know like a excuse me yeah, I, I don't know what, what you might think based on looking at it, but I would say it's uh, closer to a, a kind of a combination of, like, if you think about, like, a, a brown ale, maybe an English brown ale, so not an American brown ale where you have a lot of hops, but an English brown ale with the lower carbonation and, and sort of that malt backbone, but then add to that the uh, kind of complex dark fruit character you get in a nice Belgian beer, but minus the alcohol, that's what I'm getting in terms of flavor. Uh, it's really quite nice. The hop character, 
I would say is relatively absent. Um, there, there, there is a sort of subtle hop character that it's not even hop car uh, flavor as much as it is just um, maybe more in the mouthfeel. It adds uh, a certain bitterness that um, again combines with, or maybe maybe it aids actually the the lower carbonation and that bitterness does kind of cut against some of the sweetness coming through from the malt flavor. I think any malt driven style is going to have a perceived sweetness, even though in a four and a half percent beer like this, that's relatively dry, there isn't really any residual sugars, most likely. In terms of balance, I would say, yeah, definitely on the malt side of, of the balance. Um, yeah, maybe berry is, is something I'm picking up on. I wouldn't have thought that, but now that I'm seeing that on my descriptor list, I could see that, yeah. Um, yeah, I think sort of raisin, maybe some of the more like dark caramel type things. Okay, yeah, uh, flavor... I like this. It, it's not a huge flavor, but, you know, again, it's a 4.5% beer, so I'm fine with that. I'm going to give this a 16 out of 20. Um, and then, as for the overall impression, uh, yeah, again, this is kind of a style that's very new to me. This is the first time I've ever had maybe even a Czech lager. Excuse me. Um, let alone a dark check logger. So, okay, I'm gonna let's go back to the one sentence summary and use that as our basis. So, rich. I would say it's pretty rich in terms of flavor, especially for its alcohol. Dark. Certainly pretty dark. Complex malt character. Definitely yes. Um. And if anything, I would say that maybe the roast character and the hop character are both a bit less prominent than I was hoping. I think, when I think of Czech beer, even though I haven't had it, maybe I've sort of idealized it, but I expect it to be like kind of jam packed with flavor carried through a dry, low alcohol beer. Uh, and so, honestly, it does deliver pretty strongly on the malt character, but I'm not getting a lot of roast, and I'm not getting a significant satsar type hop character that I would have maybe expected based on what I've read. Um, I'm going to still give it a 7 out of 10 in terms of style. I would guess that since... Uh, brewery Samson got taken over by AB InBev. They probably sort of uh, homogenized the beer a bit to make it a bit more palatable and approachable to the masses. Um, I can't say for with any certainty, but I would guess that maybe this is a really popular beer uh, in Europe, maybe you know Germany, Czech Republic area. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that among Czech beers out there, there are ones that uh, meet closer to my ideal beer. So, um, overall, a really nice beer, though. Um, and I would, I will definitely be trying to get a hold of more of this, more of this style. Maybe pick up a six pack or a fifteen pack if I could find one. Uh, that would be great. Uh, this is a beer that you definitely would enjoy drinking in quantity. Um, if you like amber or brown ales, I would say give this a try. The Yeah, it's, it's sort of the lager half of that. And I think if you can find a better example, um, you might be surprisingly impressed with how much flavor you can find in... Uh, you know, a low ABV lager. Uh, certainly more impressive than the macro Budweiser's of our day. Um, and it, it can hold its own against 
um, against modern craft beer in America. I think you have to know what you're looking for, and um, yeah, overall, I, I would encourage people to seek this out and, and give it a try if you come across it. All right, that's uh, that's all for this review. Thanks, and uh, BJCP Beer Reviews with Leo, signing off. Thank mm -hmm. you.